Hello and welcome back to more Vintage Cube. We... Hmm. Actually, it's a pretty good pack. We could just take Library here. Library is a pretty good early pick. It does... I mean, it's a land that draws you cards. It's pretty nice. Uh, outside of that, Glenelindra is really strong. Shallow Grave can do some really funny stuff. And the rest of the pack is very weak, but we'll take Library and it's a good pack to wheel stuff from. Wow. Okay. We got past a Mana Crypt. I don't know what cards I would take over Mana Crypt pack one pick one. Maybe Black Lotus. I think Mana Crypt is just stronger. Um, it's at its best in Mono Red, I believe. Uh, just because Mono Red has a lot of good three drops like Layla, Goblin Rabble Master, things you can play in turn one that are just insane, but it's good in a lot of decks. There's also a Ramen Up Excavator and Crucible of Worlds, so probably going to be less leaning into... Um, Strip mine loops because we're probably going to lose both of those. I could take Hazret. I mean, as I said, it's the best in mono red. The problem with mono white is outside of Monastery Mentor, the cards that you are accelerating into, like the three drops, are usually double white. So you can't cast them on turn one uh, with Mana Crypt. So Mana Crypt's just a bit worse in those cases. It's good at casting the double white four drop planeswalkers like Gideon, Elspeth, and things like that. So it's not terrible in mono white. But it's just better in mono red because you can cast the three drops on turn one and then the four drops on turn two instead of just four drops on turn two. So because of that, I'm going to lean into red, take Hazret. I like drafting red anyway. Here's a lightning bolt. I love that card. And uh, let's do that. Uh, ooh, Phyrexian Revoker. This card is just good in general, but it's particularly good in aggressive decks and with Mana Crypt. You could play it early. You could do all the cool stuff. Um, Runaway Seampian's fine. Rakdos Signet again is good with Mana Crypt, but... I'm very happy to pick up this card. I, I don't think I've ever had this card in my deck and been sad about it. Like, there are some matchups where it's not as good as other matchups, obviously. But, you know, you lock down a Mox from the opponent. You lock down Planeswalkers. It just does all the cool things. Uh, Inferno Titan? I don't know if it's the correct pick, but it definitely signals to other people that red is open. Drafting big red is fun. Like, I oftentimes draft, like, low-to-the-ground red decks, and... It's fun having a lot of mana and casting Inferno Titan. Unfortunately, Glorybringer is gone. He was like the, the quintessential big red card. Um, so I guess the deck's quite a bit worse now that I think about it. Because the Goldspan Dragon's okay. Thundermaw Hellkite's pretty good. But like Thundermaw Hellkite hit for one less damage than Glorybringer did. Or one more damage. And then Glorybringer like killed creatures every time it attacked. Either way, though, the, either way, though, we could get, like, Chandra, Signets, um, I think, like, Devastating Force and stuff is in the cube, too. So we could, uh, Infernal Titan plus Devastating Force or something if we want to. Pretty good with Hazard too. Ooh. Hoth, Thundermaw, things. Uh, Thundermaw has a very low chance of wheeling. This is unfortunate to see both of these in the same pack. Uh, I think I like Koth. With Mana Crypt, it's better to have cheaper spells, and now that we have Koth, we could take 5 drops. So if Thundermaw comes around, we could be pretty happy about it. I just love Koth. He's not as good as I always think he is, but he's still just so cool. He's like one of the most unique Planeswalker designs where... Well, originally, I guess now every single green Planeswalker makes lands into creatures, but uh, he was one of the first. And he does it with Mountains, his emblem is really fun, his downtick is like a ritual. I don't know, it's just an awesome Planeswalker design. Here, we'll take a Blood Crypt, um, because if we wheel Rakdos Signet, we could go Black Red, an archetype that I very much enjoy. And right now, it's looking like I probably won't end up playing Library of Alexandria, but we can see. It is a good card. Okay, so this was the pack I opened that was pretty bad. Um, Ember Shieldbreaker versus Empty the Warrens. They took out Siege Gang... Wait, they made Big Red really bad, I just realized. They took out Siege Gang Commander, Thundermaw uh, Glorybringer, and Atarka. What do you... <laughs> they killed this archetype! Yeah, Siege Gang Commander was one of the keys with Empty, like it was a good thing to ramp out into. So I guess I'm not going to take Empty. I guess I'll just take Ember Shieldbreaker and be pretty sad about it. Because Empty the Warrens plus Siege Gang was like a legit combo. And nobody ever took Siege Gang, so you could be likely to wheel it, and it's just like a strong 5-drop. Okay, Birdie's nice. That's a good thing to ramp out into. Thousand Year Storm is kind of funny, actually. That's something to consider, but I like Bergy. The Horn, you know, in a deck like this, we're not Storm combo or whatever, but uh, if you play the Horn side of her, where you could just discard a card to XL the top two cards and play one, you can really go deep that way. Uh, I'm not playing any of these. 
Okay, Abbot of Curl Keep is good. Mutavolt is also nice. It's one of the benefits of being in Mono Red is you can play creature lands. Uh, but they got rid of Magda, so Magda Mutavolt is gone. I think I like Abbot. Especially with Steamkin. Okay, we're... Ooh, actually Wispwood Elemental. Red Green is still a possibility, and there's a Crypt Breaker. This is a good one. Uh, Lodestone Golem is particularly good with Mana Crypt. Duretti is fine. Badlands is good with Blood Crypt if we want to do, like, Custody Lich stuff. I think I just take Lodestone. It's the most impactful for my deck right now, and we can wheel something out of that pack. Uh, ooh, Fire Blast. Love me a Fire Blast. Hellbrider's good. I guess that's a reason to take Empty. Um, Time Spiral's funny. Thrag Tusk, you know, green red stuff is good, but I'm just gonna take Fire Blast. Thran Dynamo is also a consideration, but I don't know. You don't really want that in your red decks. Like, uh, the two drop accelerant, Grim Monolith, I think is much better. Basically, hitting a Inferno Titan on turn three is a lot better than casting like an Inferno Titan on turn five, I guess, would be the Thran Dynamo ramp. Ooh, Seasoned Pyromancer, I love that. I think Sneak Attack's fine. Not amazing in this deck. Uh, Manamorphos is good too. Chromox is alright. But Seasoned Pyromancer is just an amazing card. Did I have no three drops before? <laughs> I guess this is zero. I don't think I had any threes. There we go. I don't, like, I'm counting Bergy as a 5 because I'm not really planning to cast her as a 3, but if my hand shapes up in a certain way, maybe I will. Like, she can attack and she has the ability that boast abilities trigger twice. Which does the thing. Uh, Basalt Monolith I think is better than Thran Dynamo in this deck. But I also like Figure of Destiny. And we're just going to take the figure. Demonic Tutor would be nice if I had, like, Bloodstained Mire or whatnot. I could try and wheel this card, but I think we're kind of just mono red, and I'm not too mad about it. Here we could take Bone Crusher over Colgon's Command. Oddly enough, these cards are fairly similar. These, I guess this kills artifacts. I don't know. My curve looks weird. I'm probably not going green. Incinerate, yeah. Red is wide open. Uh, is this a Gruel Signet deck? I guess I could put Bergy back here for curve cases. I don't think it is. I think actually we're just going into like a good red deck. Red Elemental Blast is really wild. Um, I think I like Coercive Portal over Grim Monolith. Is that true? Or Grim, Grim Lava Mancer? I'm not taking Red Blast. It's a sideboard card. It's a fine sideboard card. Uh, maybe it's the card I want, actually. Like, in some matchups, it's so backbreaking. It's weird to bring it into the cube because it's purely a sideboard option, but Grim Lava Mancer is okay. Coercive Portal is just okay. All right, you know what? I'll take it. The scariest matchups, this will help us. Winter Orb, Chocolate Hops. Uh, you know what? I might just take a Nurturing Peatland as an off-color land that gives us hard draw. I'm not playing like Winter Orb or anything, so... If I feel like I'm in a matchup where it's going to be grindy and I want to run, like, slightly fewer lands, I could run that one. Okay, there's bad lands. I'm not running Duretti, so we'll just make the Black Splash more possible if we need it. Uh, I mean, there's Thran Dynamo. I guess oh, it's it's so bad to have Thran Dynamo be the top of your curve. And Thunderball Hellkite got taken. So I'm not really ramping into anything. I'm just going to take Thrag Tusk. I could see a world where I splash green. I just, like, I cast it on forward. The only thing it accelerates me into is Inferno Titan. And that's just not good. Sneak Attack still came around? Wild. I'm just going to take Metamorphose. It's good with Bergy if I need to do that. Um, it's good with Runaway Steamkin and Abbot of Carol Keep, so I think that seems worth it. Over the red-white duel that I'm probably not going to play. Wow. Ashok, Elastor, and Bolas is Citadel. I might consider Basalt Monolith, just because that can accelerate me into Inferno Titan. But yeah, we're really missing the three drops. Like, someone's cutting us on some things, and then passing other things, and it's very confusing. Like, we're still getting Scrap Heap Scroungers and whatnot, which actually... That's a reason just to have Blood Crypt, and Blood Crypt and Badlands on its own. So that actually is really nice. Um, good card with Mana Crypt, too. Uh, birthing Pod? You know what? I love Mono Red or Red Black Birthing Pod. We're not there yet, but we're not like ins insanely far away from it. We have a Seasoned Pyromancer to hit and then hit Hazard or something. Here we're going to take Swift Spear. I have a lot of good non-creature spells that'll trigger it. Um, yeah, I don't think Unholy Heat is that great. Goblin Guide. 
Underworld Breach is fun, but I think we just take the Goblin. Where are the three drops? Beaumont Courier is good. I mean, I'm not complaining. Do I need removal? Do I need a dismember? I have Lightning Bolt, Incinerate, Bone Crusher Giant. Maybe I take dismember and wheel Beaumont Courier just as a way to kill bigger creatures. Or when I say wheel, I mean like try to wheel. I think I'll do that. Okay, Avalanche Riders, normally I don't love, but because we have Mana Crypt, we can actually accelerate it out in a somewhat timely manner. So that's pretty good. Eidolon's a great card. Karn Sign of Urza is tempting as well. Again, because of Mana Crypt specifically. Because Eidolon may make its way around, but I don't think I need that many 4-drops. I'll just take the good card. Um, a Braid was another consideration. But I already have, like, more than enough playables. 28, 24... Oh, Birthing Pod, go away. Assault Monolith, go away. So I need like two playables. And I think I should be able to find those at some point. Kind of a weird deck. Like I said, I mentioned the whole benefit of Mana Crypt is like Goblin Rabble Master and stuff. And I can play Bergy, but you don't really want to do that. So we're not really taking advantage of Mana Crypt as much as I would have liked. But on the flip side, we do have Phyrexian Revoker, Scrap Heap Scrounger. So that we can have some good plays of like turn one Goblin Guide, Scrap Heap Scrounger and put five power into play on turn one. Yeah, think about that. <laughs> turn one Goblin Guide Scrap Heap Scrounger, turn two Avalanche Riders, turn three Koth or something. Oh, there's the Vortex. All right. <laughs> pretty, pretty good three drop. Again, not one work that works with the Mana Crypt, but it's just a good card. We're missing all of the utility lands, though. We don't have Strip Mine, Wasteland, Rishid Import, uh, Mutavault, Mistress Factory. We passed up on Mutavault. But that's because I was trying to go for Big Red, and that's before I realized that Big Red died in the last cube update. Ooh, Chain Lightning. Okay, that's a really good pickup. So right now this is 16 lands. Maybe I cut Bergy? My 1-3 drop. I guess Bone Crusher Giant is kind of one as well. Mana Flare, Burst Lightning, Seething Song, uh, Bitter Blossom. If I had better fixing, I, I think Bitter Blossom would be nice in this deck, but Burst Lightning is also pretty nice. Um, I'll take on Holy Heat. I don't think I like main decking it, but if I play against the deck with like Mana Elves or something where I'm very likely to want to kill stuff, then I'll bring that in. And now I think I do cut Fergie. This is 14 land including Mana Crypt. I think I do run Library, it's not a huge cost. Uh, I don't have the Mana for Showdown of the Scalds. Against a deck with a lot of removal, I'll side in Hanger Backwalker, I guess. Wear Tear. Richard's pretty good. I think that. Again for the sideboard, him to Torok for the sideboard. Skyclave Shade. Uh yeah, if someone's drafting Storm, they can have Yogmoss will. Um, but I will cut someone off of fixing. I figure people who draft Storm need all the help they can get, so I might as well give it to them. Uh this thing doesn't do anything. Okay, so 28. This puts me at 16 land. This is a zero drop. So I have an Inferno Titan in my 16 land deck. I think that's fine though, because I can operate on two lands for quite a while. And I'm also monocolored, so it's hard for me to get color screwed. It's really 15 plus mana crypt, but does that make sense? Metamorphose cycles. Bone Crusher Giant goes here, these go here. Seasoned Pyromancer helps me loot. Otherwise, I can run Hangerback Walker instead of Inferno Titan. That makes my deck a lot better. I feel comfortable running 15 lands that way. Yeah, I like that. I can side. In Inferno Titan against creature decks, but just having another card, Hangerback Walker, that's good with Mana Crypt and stuff, I like a lot more. All oh, right, we are playing against Lolair. Look at this hand. Oh, look at this hand. Uh, yeah, this is good. Turn one Goblin Guide. Turn two something. I don't know. We're just maximizing damage here. They might have a shock. We do give them a Marsh Flats. Ooh, I love seeing Marsh Flats with Spire Bluff Canal when I'm playing Mono Red. That's gotta be a good sign. Maybe I just run out uh, Eidolon of the Great Rebel. And this is sort of the problem with Runaway Steamkin, is it doesn't really do a whole lot. Hmm. I mean, it's gonna be pretty big next turn. Alright, I'll, I'll play it a little bit risky here, go Steamkin first. Because I think if my opponent had cheap removal, they would have used it the previous turn. They draw Unholy Heat. Well, not if they're drawing it this turn, I guess. So they're going to kill my Steamkin. Although, honestly, this might be better, right? Because they kill my Steamkin and then Eidolon's in play. Or they let Eidolon resolve and I keep a Steamkin. 
Or they just cast Sword of Temptation, I get to do all the things. That's pretty nice, actually. So, let's go Chain Lightning, the Sower. Then Shock, cast Swift Spear. Then cast Figure. Hit them for three. Swords to Plowshares. All right. Well, again, they're going to cast that and hit something and not hit Eidolon. Probably run away Steamkin. Yeah. Okay, did they Unholy Heat? They still have Unholy Heat in their hand. So let's go Mountain, Eidolon. Now they want Unholy Heat right now. Or if they wait, then uh, they take damage off Eidolon. Okay, so now they're kind of planning to kill the Eidolon, I think. Hit them. Zealous Conscripts. That's good to know about. Okay. Okay, so they're playing Twin. Um, are they dead next turn? They have a 3-3. Three, three. Because I could... Bone Basically, if they have Pester Might. But I think if they had Twin, they would have gone for it already. So I think I'm going to level this up now. I think they would have defensively played a Pester Might to tap down an attacker or something. Resto... Okay. Fair enough. Well, that was going to happen no matter what I did. So I think that's fine. Yeah, I'm in trouble. They unholy heat my Eidolon. Okay, they fold a six. What is this? Put a counter on a creature. Create a samurai token with vigilance. Excellent target tap creature. You gain two life. Oh, none of these are good. All right. They go up to eight. She's down to one. So I guess I can bone crusher giant kill the wandering thing. Put a counter on up to one target creature against first strike. They have one card in hand and we know it's Zealous Conscript. Alright, so yeah, let's stomp this. Then we can play Bone Crusher. They can't really attack. And they're at eight. Okay, Nahiri's pretty good draw. They probably just discard the Zealous Conscripts if they're playing Nahiri here. Just looking for Kiki. Wait, where did Zealous Conscripts go? Show game log. What is happening? They must have shuffled. I guess that's what it was. They must have shuffled after Zealous Conscripts. Okay. Scrap Heap Scrounger is good. Let's attack their face with Bone Crusher Giant. Uh, if I attack their face... Yeah, I attack their face, then they're dead to Fire Blast. Oh, I should have attacked with Goblin Guide too. That was a mistake. Yeah, because they... Yeah, I should have attacked with Goblin Guide. Monastery Mentor, plus a spell. So they would be at uh, six, I guess. That's a lot of land. Okay. Um, I can swing out at Nahiri, but I'm like kind of dead if I do that. So I just have to hope they don't have anything here. Wear Tear. Okay, they could just kill Scrap Heap. I'm going to hold Mountain in hand so they don't know what's up. Oh, wait, they could kill Scrap Heap with that. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, I'm pretty dead here. Interesting. They decided to take the damage. No, no, no. I'm getting confused. Where Tear was on top of their library. Okay, so now they can Emblem Nahiri and see what that does. But they're playing a Kiki deck, so I don't think they're like super likely to do anything ridiculous with that. And if I draw a Burn Spell... Okay, that works. I can just bring it back. Yeah, okay. Figured it out. Nahiri's Emblem does not do a whole lot. Alright, let's get back this dude. Exiling... Uh, I guess? Figure of Destiny? This is unreal. Um, I guess I hit them down to two. And then... Try to think, I don't really have any card draw. If I had burn, they know I would have played it, so... <laughs> There's not a whole lot of use in bluffing. Like, if I had anything, it would be in play. Alright, please don't have lifelink. Pretty good. <laughs> not a bad card. I'm surprised they didn't want to do that last turn. So they can do 3 to my face, hit me for 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. But I'm too... Well, I guess they can't attack next turn. No, it's 15, yeah. Alright, what do, what do they have? They have Inferno Titan, 1 unknown. Phyrexian Revoker is pretty good. Let's attack with Scrap Heat. Actually, no, Phyrexian Revoker is terrible because they're just going to play Inferno Titan. Attack them. See if I die. Venser. Cryptic command. 
Okay, so they were just holding counter magic. That's actually fine. I can go with scrap heap now. They play in Proto Titan and kill my scrap heap. And if I play Phyrexian Invoker, they're just going to kill it. Right? They just play in Proto Titan and kill both. Yeah, so we just do this. I'm running 15 land, by the way. <laughs> so there are uh, 8 left in my 24 card deck. So we're likely to hit something. Avalanche Riders is lethal unless they draw something. Koth is, like, a, a lot of cards are lethal unless they draw something. Avalanche Riders, Koth, Hazard. I guess that's a reason to play my Mountain is Hazard. Yep, Inferno Titan, kill the thing. Or just go face, honestly. Yeah, that makes more sense to me. There you go. <laughs> Avalanche Riders, play around, I don't know, Double Days. This is non-land card names. All right, I tapped too much mana. Okay, you know what? We'll take those. Okay, red, white, planeswalker, creature stuff. They had cryptic command. So I guess we bring in red elemental blast instead of dismember. Because dismember doesn't even kill Inferno Titan. We'll just run it like that. So Brick Vortex seems good against them. This hand is quite slow, but I'll keep it. They have so much removal. Ooh, fire blast. Okay. So if we draw a land, we get to go Hangerback, Sulfuric, Avalanche Riders. They're taking damage off their mana as well. Is it Signet? All right. Can I draw Phyrexian Revoker? No. There's the land, though. Hangerback, Walker. Go. They don't do anything? Okay. Um, hmm. Restoration Angel, potentially? I think I'm going to go for Abbott here, just to play around Counter Magic a little bit. Ooh, that's exceptional. All right, I'll play my Mountain. Play Mana Crypt. That resolves. Uh, I guess now I can incinerate and activate hanger back. So that's pretty good. Next turn is going to be really nice. No attacks. Resto comes down. Or I guess like Factor Fiction could be a thing. Oh, okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Oh, they don't know they can activate her. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Oh, right, right. If I burn her... Okay, so now I can... Kill the Wandering Emperor, and then hang her back, Walker. Okay, that worked out really well. Nahiri eats my hanger back. Okay. But now I get to resolve so Ugh, no, Sulfuric Vortex actually... Oof. Sulfuric Vortex dies to Nahiri currently. They didn't even attack with a Vigilance token. I'll take it. Tails never fails. Ooh! Ooh, goodbye, Nahiri, I think. So I can go Koth of the Hammer. Excellent magic card. Um, then I can go Mountain, untap a land. And I played a tapped one. So this one has to have haste. Uh, so I can attack Nahiri, or I can play Sulfuric Vortex. If I play Sulfuric Vortex, then uh, Nahiri can just exile it. So I think, given how much mana I have, I think I'm just going to Fire Blast the token. Actually, for the sake of mana, I think I'm going to Fire Blast Nahiri and then just cast Sulfuric Vortex. No, let's Fire Blast the token. And then kill Nahiri. Yeah, I think I like this more, because then Koth stays healthy. And I think we Avalanche Riders the Plateau, because this deck, the deck they're playing is Screaming, Kiki Jiki, Splinter Twin stuff, so... Attacking their sources of red mana is quite reasonable. They don't do anything. Okay. I like that. Tails. Lightning Bolt. Alright, so we get to go like this. Untap to play around days. Avalanche Riders. They counterspell that. That's fine. I'm just going to attack them for four. Okay. Conscripts can't actually kill Koth, but they can hit me for seven. That's a lot of damage, especially with the Mana Crypt. I don't know if I can cast Sulfuric Vortex now. <laughs> I think it depends if I lose this Mana Crypt flip or not. If I win the flip, I might just play Sulfuric Vortex because they're about to take a bunch of damage also. Okay, win the flip. Run away Steamkin. Okay, so... I need to play Lightning Bolt and Sulfuric Vortex. Hmm... I think I like this better. I can go Runaway Steamkin, Lightning Bolt, and attack. That seems better than Casting Vortex. Lightning Bolt, you. 
Always yield. This protects me from Kikijiki. We untap this mountain and hit them for four. Ah, sacrificing my mountains really hurts with Koth being able to emblem, but... Okay, Sword of Temptation is fine. I can Koth emblem? Kill the Sower? Don't lose the flip. Tails never fails. Okay, nice. Lodestone Golem. Yeah, I think I gotta do this. Kill this. Kill this. Go ahead. This mana crypt is really scary. And all I want to do is draw lands, which is rare. Here comes Inferno Titan. Killing Runaway Steamkin. Kind of rooting my last chances of winning this game. Fire Blast is gone. Yeah. Oh, they let Steamkin live. I don't think that changes anything. Tails never fails. No. Scribe Peep Scrounger. Um, all right. Let's go ahead and play Lodestone. The only way I can survive this. I think I'm going to lose after Embleming Koth. All right, we're dead. <laughs> For some reason, I thought I could block it, but I definitely could not. Um, yeah, no changes, really. Do I want Unholy Heat? No, I want to be proactive. They, they just had like a couple annoying things. Oh, wait, this can hit Planeswalkers. Um, no, I think the deck's good. And if you didn't know, I do make art. Uh, today I'm showcasing my historical restoration pieces. Um, so this is where I go through and find uh, something like Leonardo da Vinci's notebook, uh, which is really small. And I use an AI algorithm to restore it to full resolution, and it looks really awesome. So the one that I like the most is the Leonardo da Vinci skull. It looks really cool. Uh, framed on the wall. I think here's a picture someone had of it. So that one's pretty cool. Um, I also have them available in metal. I actually have this one in my bathroom. This is a real picture of the piece that I have in person. It's available on metal. Uh, the berry plant's pretty good too. So if you're interested in any of those, uh, there's also a ton of other art if you're interested in that. Otherwise, enjoy the games. All right, on the play. Uh, no lodestone, but it looks fast enough. Got scrap heat, Brexian Revoker for the Is It Signet. Um, I could play Blood Crypt Tapped. I don't even have to take damage. Okay. Man, I wish I had Wasteland or like... <laughs> this deck is so much worse than it could be if I had the Disruptive Lands. Mana Crypt? No. I mean, Mountain's still good. Scrap Peep. Rexian Revoker cannot name Sheldock Isle. Okay, so I just want to see like, is it Signet? Okay, they're going to counterspell something. I definitely want to cast Rexian Revoker. Um, I guess I just name like Nahiri in the dark if it resolves. Okay, I'm pretty happy trading that with the counterspell. So next turn, we're going to go with Lodestone. Never mind, we'll go with Koth, free combat. Um, I guess at this point, I should just downtick and cast Lodestone. Marshlands can maybe grab a red source. Uh, which mountain is newly? Newly controlled is that one, so I can do that one, all right. Yeah, I guess I want to protect myself from burn spells on Koth. Because I could downtick cast Lodestone. But this also hits them for 7. Unless they Swords my Mountain? Ugh. Um, yeah. Turns out the other play would have worked much better. They can't Cryptic Command. I can get up to 6 mana now with Koth Downtick? Hmm. <laughs> what do I want to do here? This is annoying. What do I do here? They could have Restoration Angel, in which case I could Fire Blast. I could just play Lodestone Golem right now, and that forces them to play Resto right away. But then that really locks me out of other things, but I think I kind of like that. Then I know whether or not I can attack freely with Scrap Heap Scrounger. Okay, that does the thing too. So they can make a 2-2 first strike thing or whatever. Oh, gross! <laughs> X on my land! Okay. Well, I get to kill the Wandering Emperor, because they can make a 2-2, which just blocks. This card's pretty good, actually. And now I'm in trouble. So are they. Okay, they don't do anything. They could have Restoration Angel now. What do I do? 5, 6, 7, 8. Fire Blast costs 1 mana. Swiss Spear costs 2 mana. I think we just go deep. Do that, uh, and just swing out. Okay, they didn't have Cryptic. 
Restoration Angel. Uh, I guess they can block Lodestone. Kind of any of this is fine with me. If they block Scrap Heap, that's fine. This is also fine because I can play post combat Monastery Swift Spear. Coth Emblem's in the ready. Yeah, I think that worked out kind of how I would like it. If for some reason, I thought I could Fire Blast and keep my attacking mountain, but I cannot. So now I guess just drawing a mountain is a, like a really good draw because I can go Runaway Steamkin Hazard it. Fire Blast. <sighs> okay. Um, they die. Okay. <laughs> um, no, they could have a burn spell actually. Like Unholy Heat. I want them to attack. Alright, now they die. Ooh, that was really close. That Fracture Identity was scary. I mean, Daze doesn't do it. One, two, three, four. Yeah. We'll play around Daze. Can I beat anything else? No. So let's just... No, let's go for Runaway Steamkin. If they have Daze, they would Daze this, I think. Attack them. Fire Blast their face. Okay. Ooh, that was a close one. See you guys next round. All right, we're here for round two against E2 Star. Go first. Yeah, it's a lot of lands, but that's fine. And I guess I actually want to kind of bait my opponent into Wastelanding. So I'm going to lead on Badlands because the way you think about it is when your opponent Wastelands you, it's reciprocal because it's one for one exchange. So it's like you're Wastelanding them. So if I can convince an opponent to Wasteland my Figure of Destiny, um, I've kind of won that exchange. Let's go ahead and cast Metamorphose. Um, because I have more lands than I need right now. Anyway. Do this. Just add red, red. He's in Pyromancer is a good thing to cast next turn. Make this into a 2-2. Two, two. Hit them. Um, the reason for casting Metamorphose is I could have drawn, like, Goblin Guide. Tamir Signet's fine. Uh, what do I discard? I'm gonna go Seasoned Pyromancer. And I'm gonna discard, I think, Blood Crypt Lodestone Golem. Then hit them. I like Burst Lightning because it's my only interaction. And Lodestone felt bad if they were playing artifacts. This is pretty nice, actually. So I get to play Eidolon pre-combat. Uh, if they have Cryptic Command, actually, I'd rather move to combat. This is feeling more Cryptic Commandy. Venser? Shark Typhoon, okay. The 2-2. Two, two. They draw a card. So we're just going to Burst Lightning that. I can make this into a 4-4, but I actually want to get cards into play, so let's go Swift Spear, then Eidolon. Go ahead. Alright, that game down. They didn't even have to see the rest. They're playing blue, so Red Elemental Blast comes in for Dismember, and I run it like that. Uh, yeah, I'll keep this hand on the draw. We're not playing Tomb- oh, Mountain. What is this? You can't just Goblin Welder. Do I Chain Lightning the Goblin Welder? No, I think I Goblin Guide, and I'd like to Bone Crusher Giant the Goblin Welder. I think it's unlikely that they're going to get Waterlogged Grove. Okay, this is, not, this is not the same deck that I looked at round one. I think it's unlikely they put something in their graveyard and can weld it away. So, I don't know, this feels safer. There's a lot of red sources, though. <laughs> you love to see them attack with the Goblin Welder. Lodestone Golem lets attack for two. So they didn't play the land I showed them, I think because it enters tapped. No. Interesting. Okay. But why are there so many? They were playing all blue sources before. <laughs> what is happening here? Um, I, I'm going to get down Hangerback Walker. I'm being... Uh, I should probably kill Goblin Welder. All right. That's where like really bad things happen. They just like go Faithless Looting end of turn or something and then kill me. Zoria's Signet is fine. Telerian Academy is also fine. Take the one here. All right, do this. There's our mountain. So let's attack, give them more lands. Dak Faden, that's good to know about. Actually, very good to know about. Um, do I tempt them into Dak Fadening so I can Red Elemental Blast? I don't think so. I think I just use my mana. Like, it would be good to counter him before they get the loot, but they're going to end up having to, like, Dark Fane's just going to die to my attackers, so it's not that big of a deal. They portent themselves, okay. 
Oh, if they miss a land drop here, it's game over. Well, if they miss a land drop and I hit a land drop anyway. So now let's see if Portent showed whether or not they shuffled. Chooses not to use Portent's ability. So last time it just didn't say anything, so this time it told me they did not shuffle. They hit a land. Abbot of Carol Keep. Um, actually kind of like playing that pre-combat. What if I hit like a land or something? Rexian Revoker. Can't really play that one. Attack deck, attack them. But they did leave a land on top, very clever. And I'm just going to hold up Red Elemental Blast in this spot. Like, Tinker is scary, there's a lot of things that can happen here. I'll let Brainstorm through. Don't like that one. That like blocks my whole team, actually. <laughs> they do have a lot of good discard for the Goblin Welder. They discarded Shark Typhoon. Okay. So we can burst lighting the season pyromancer. Then chain lightning their face, put them down to nine. That forces a chump block. Chain lightning the elemental token, hit them for 10 down to two. If I chain lightning their face, put them down to nine. Then elemental token blocks here. They take six and go to three. So it actually does more damage just to kill the elemental token outright and then still lets me hold up Red Elemental Blast. In fact, if they try and counter this, I do even more damage and put them to one. Now they cannot target Bone Crusher Giant with a spell. And I have Lethal in hand. Emery doesn't really do anything, so that's fine. I'm gonna counter like a Time Walk or something. Wheel of Fortune, Demir Signet, Emery. Okay. All right, let's move to combat. So I have Incinerate, Red Blast in hand to protect all of this stuff. They make two elementals, then they die. Okay, we win the match. See you guys in the finals. Oh, right, we're playing against Skintos. We're on the play. That's pretty scary. This hand is a lot of land, but I will keep it. Um, got a mix of lands and spells, and like, if I mulligan, that's always the question you want to ask yourself. Would I keep, uh, you know, the three land version of this hand? And the answer is Definitely, yes. So, oh, duress? Ugh. All right. Well, <laughs> they get rid of one of my things. Yep. Not the best hand in the world. Oh, really? We're running 15. All right, what else do you got? Please don't be reanimator. No. Ah, uh, reanimator is such a bad matchup for mono red. Demir Signet, all right. Um, I think I'm just going to incinerate face here. I just need to be efficient with my mana. Yikes. That's really bad. That was like the worst card I could have drawn. Verdant Catacombs. Okay. Oh, I mean, Dismember has some utility. I can kill creatures with it. Which is essentially the reason for going Incinerate Face. Oh, okay. I like this. We get to kill this dude. He makes a 2-2. Two -two. We trade off 2-2s. Two they draw a card. Play land, play Eidolon, setting up for Hazard off the top. So now reanimate's kind of suspicious. Man, maybe I am just supposed to... If this member was Red Elemental Blast, I'd be in pretty good shape, because I would just counter Urza instead of, instead of uh, letting him resolve and then kill him. They'd be at 8. Okay. Uh, Such more Wish is pretty rough, because they can get and block with 1-1 one, one lifelink, or uh, pests, basically. They go to six, though. Okay, we're still in this. Not anymore. I will attack with Eidolon, because if they trade with Sedgemore, which I think that's a benefit for me. Yeah, giving them the one life, though, is pretty brutal. Player land. Yeah, this is too many lands for a 15 land deck. I mean, to be fair, I think the hand I kept had four lands in it. Okay, you know what? Liliana puts them down to five. If she edicts away my Eidolon... It's not that big of a deal. Because now Hazard's live and doesn't just instantly die to Liliana. But now they probably have counter magic. Uh, all right, go. Discard my last card. Now we find our Banefire. Man, Banefire off the top would be really funny here. All right, I think I will concede to that. They get the 1-1 one, one thing that gains life. Like, I can't beat that. Uh, Red Elemental Blast comes in, or Dismember, 
And I run it like that. Definitely don't want sort of body of mind in this matchup. All right, we can't go out that disgracefully. Let's have a good hand. Ah, the old no lands. This hand would be amazing with a single land. This hand's fine. Um, we'll keep this. Fire Blast is good, but it's pretty awkward because I'm going to have to discard it to Season Pyromancer most likely. So I think I get rid of Fire Blast. Lodestone Golem seems alright against them. Play this tapped. Maybe they're not on Reanimator. We'll see it though. Okay, Runaway Steamkin first. Then, I guess probably still Season Pyromancer, discarding Lodestone and what, whatever I draw. I play Charter Course. Please don't, re don't discard a thing. Okay, okay, ooh, okay. I feel better now. Swift Spear. Hmm, you know what? I'm feeling like Abbot of Carol Keep into Swift Spear. No! All right, well, you know, that actually would have been a pretty bad draw, so that's fine. It's crazy how my deck can do stuff when I draw things. <laughs> they kill this seasoned Pyromancer. Understandably so. Ugh. Oh. This sucks, but I think I have to do it still. Those are like my two best top end cards, but this is a lot of power. There's my lands. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. I think that's still the correct play because waiting that turn and not drawing a land next turn is so absolutely brutal. But now I, I lost all of my four drops that I'm drawing into. Ugh. Yeah. Oh, why? <laughs> That's so frustrating. Like, I don't know. Maybe it is correct to wait, but it feels like you just can't sit there and do nothing. They take my mana crypt. Yeah. This this was, I think, the worst possible draw sequencing. Oh, well, aside from like all the lands at the end, right? Because then you can't cast any, but it was very bad. Okay, they brainstorm. So I'm no longer drawing to hazard it. I don't know, maybe because it was literally my two best top decks. <laughs> I'm supposed to do something. Here comes Liliana discarding my mountain. But I don't know. The problem is they can just keep fate healing me. Okay, they're just... It's actually worse that they're brainstorming. I don't know, let me know in the comments if you would have done this, uh... What is this thing? Season Pyromancer play, or if you would have sat there and played nothing. Because, like, if they don't have Damnation exactly there... Alright, I'm just done. I'm not winning this game. Really unfortunate finals. I think my deck definitely deserved a trophying. Um, greedy keep on the first one. And then... I don't know if it was a misplay. It's just, like, the worst luck. Because I got all of my good... Like, I literally, in a row, exiled Hazret, Then discarded Koth... Or, exiled Koth, then discarded Hazret Lodestone. Maybe I needed, like, deck awareness. But, like... No, I think it was correct, right? Because I could Season Pyromancer to discard those, and I could just as easily draw into two spells. And they could also not have Damnation, and then I'm in a really good position with, like, board presence, because this is uh, four power, you know? I don't know. Unfortunate, but the deck was sweet. See you guys next time.